won, at least in, in my liking, and you're the expert here. He decisively lost it. Um, he might have made some very good presentations on where the economy was, but it was all over the map. And this is that first occasion where it wasn't just a close call. It, it, it was a lopsided one. Wasn't even a close call. Hi again, everybody. Your eyes do not deceive you. It's 5 o'clock in New York. And those are words the ex-president cannot handle. Quote, he decisively lost. Donald Trump hated hearing that from Neil Cavuto over at Fox so much, he attacked the Fox News anchor in a social media post last night, calling him one of the worst on television. But Neil Cavuto is not alone in that assessment of Trump's debate performance, even at Fox, even among places typically solidly friendly to the ex-president. New York Times reports this, quote, several Trump allies and advisors who spoke to the New York Times anonymously said they saw the night as a colossal missed opportunity. Trump had one overriding goal for the evening, to force Ms. Harris to own her left-wing policy record and to attach her in voters' minds to the most unpopular aspects of the Biden-Harris record. Instead, he found himself defending many of his decisions and past positions while spreading unfounded claims about immigrants eating pets. Indeed, it appeared, as the New York Times reports, that, quote, Mr. Trump snagged himself on every trap Ms. Harris laid out for him, and he showcased how he is becoming more and more completely beholden to fringy far-right influences and conspiracy theorists. New reporting in The Atlantic explores how Trump has, quote, exhibited himself as someone who is not simply on the Internet, but as someone who is of the Internet. In real life, he speaks in posts emblematic of the terminally online. Orban is a figure who is dear to much of the online far right for his moves to erode Hungarian democracy, but who is likely not a well-known figure to most voters. Transgender operations for illegal aliens in prison is a phrase chat GPT would spit out if you fed it right-wing posts and asked it to parody them. Haitian immigrants eating people's pets in Ohio is a hallucination that was born on the right-wing internet as well. That last claim is one spread online by prominent far-right conspiracy theorist Laura Loomer, who we know traveled with Donald Trump on his plane to the debate. She also accompanied him yesterday to an event at a New York City fire station commemorating the anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attack. There's one problem with that. Just last year, Laura Loomer called 9-11 an inside job. She's a 9-11 truther. On Sunday, she posted a racist tirade against Vice President Kamala Harris. It was so racist and offensive that we've made the decision not to platform it and, and show it to you. And even staunch Trump ally and far-right extremist herself, Marjorie Taylor Greene called Loomer out for it. And we only tell you that to answer the question, how bad was it? It was so bad. Marjorie Taylor Greene was offended. Now, with just uh, two months left to go before Election Day, it is people like Laura Loomer who are driving the Trump train. And it's where we start the hour with some of our favorite reporters and friends. NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard is in Tucson, Arizona for us, where Trump is holding a rally today. It's supposed to be about the economy. We're going to keep an eye on that for you. Plus, former Republican congressman, MSNBC political analyst David Jolly is here. Democratic strategist and professor at Columbia University, MSNBC political analyst Basil Smichel's back. And the editor-at-large for the 19th, the host of the podcast, The Amendment, MSNBC political analyst Aaron Haynes is back. Uh, Von Hilliard, I start with you. Um, I wonder who thinks this is working. It's a good question, Nicole. Um, I think for Donald Trump, he thinks it's working. And I think that that is how this campaign is operated. And when we're looking at how his co-campaign managers and senior advisors have postured themselves towards Donald Trump, it has been through ensuring that they are not acting as gatekeepers to him. We have seen in past administration officials come and go. He fires them. That hasn't been the case this go around. And that's because they have not obstructed anybody who wants to get the ear of Donald Trump from getting the ear of Donald Trump. And if Donald Trump says that he wants Laura Loomer on his plane, Laura Loomer is on his plane. And I think that this is 
a moment where you kind of see the nexus of even 12 years, if I may, of conspiracy theories and Donald Trump's flirting with them and outright embrace of them coming to a head a mere weeks before early ballots go out. And I think that Arizona, you could say it's quite fitting to be here because right as we were coming to air, folks were giving a round of applause and standing ovation to Carrie Lake as she entered. Of course, she's running for the Senate. But there's another notable figure in this very room, this theater where I'm at, where Donald Trump is set to take the stage. And that's Joe Arpaio. Joe Arpaio, who sent his posse, so-called posse members from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office 12 years ago to Hawaii to investigate the birtherism claims surrounding Barack Obama's birth at the same time that Donald Trump was calling heightened attention nationally to that very issue. 12 years later, the two men are here on the cusp of potentially winning the White House here yet again. And for what consequence? Well, Donald Trump lost in 2020. But for both of those men, they are still greeted by rounds of applause, standing ovations. There is a base of support that has been propagated by right-wing media from Charlie Kirk to J Jack Posobiec who gave, uh, uh, perpetuated and elevated the conversation around the quote, pet eating, and Laura Loomer, whose hundreds of thousands, millions of followers are, uh, are all but legitimized by the former uh, president of the United States, Donald Trump, who talks about them, he's praised them from the stage. And I think that the question here is at this point in time, just how many people in this country follow the uh, propagation of these types of conspiracy theories. We saw them rejected in 20, 2020. We saw them rejected in 2022. The question here is in the weeks ahead as those mail-in ballots come out is, will crowds outside of this room, of course, but will crowds, those independent voters, will they reject those types of things that are coming out of the words of the Republican nominee, Nicole? I mean, to surround yourself with someone so crazy that Marjorie Taylor Greene is mad and attacking you, um, tell me if their campaign is still about getting more votes than Kamala Harris, or if this is a different project. Well, I, I think that this is, I think that there's two things happening. There's a campaign happening, and then there is another power dynamic, which is simply a movement, and those who are seeking power within it, right? Marjorie Taylor Greene speaking out against Laura Loomer, who has plain access. It's flying around with him to a debate, to 9-11 ceremonies. And frankly, the only two people who have publicly, within the Republican ranks, spoken out against Laura Loomer associating with Donald Trump's are Marjorie Taylor Greene, who over the course of 24 hours led Loomer to go on uh, a mass posting on social media attacking Marjorie Taylor Greene as anti-Semitic, attacking her family. The other person was a Republican uh, a member of Congress who came out and said that she was trouble and Donald Trump shouldn't associate with her. And in turn, Laura Loomer, just this afternoon, openly to her massive followers, suggested that this member of Congress is gay, suggesting that he needs to come out of the closet. And that is why people are fearful of Laura Loomer and Donald Trump and his campaign, despite a, a flurry of officials from NBC us reaching out, asking if there was any effort to uh, disassociate the two or to push her away or make sure she was not on the plane. There has been silence. And that is why Laura Loomer continues to see an ally in Donald Trump. And frankly, until we hear otherwise from the Republican nominee, I, I, I think that we are watching unfold in real time a power dynamic that has taken over a Republican Party, elections aside, even if he loses, this is a conversation that is going to be taking place about a hundreds of million dollar uh, organization that happens to be a political party. That's really, really dramatic and really nuanced and really important. Um, Von Hilliard, I know it's also really close to starting, so we're going to let you go and cover that. But do come back. Uh, wave, wave your arms at the camera and come back um, if you have anything before the end of the hour for us. Thank you so much for starting us off, my friend.